Hello everybody and welcome to the video. So if you are a student or a professional of life science and you're looking at entering a career that is going to boom in the next decade, then this video is definitely for you because today we're going to see the life science jobs and skills in demand in 2030, the top 10 list. I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. So the first job or the skill that I have for all of you is AI in biology, that is artificial intelligence in biology. What is artificial intelligence? So artificial intelligence is the use of computers in biology, right? So it mainly involves machine learning and deep learning. So what do we mean by machine learning is that you give a certain input, a certain data to the machine and the machine learns a relationship between the two independent variable that's given in the data and it forms a relationship between them and when you give just one of uh, one set of data here then it will predict the next set of data so that is what is machine learning that is the machine has learned and de to develop a relationship between the two data set and it is able to predict the rest of the data sets, right? So that is machine learning. So deep learning is nothing but drawing a conclusion or an analysis from the relationship that it has formed. That is how we humans, um, you know, after getting the results uh, of any experiment, we try to draw a conclusion from it. So similarly, the deep learning technique, it helps in drawing conclusions of the relationship between data, right? So that is what machine learning and deep learning is. And this, especially in biology, it helps in the field of diagnosis because we have a lot of, lot of imaging techniques um, that is used in the medical field, right? Say, be it the MRI scan or the X-ray, CT scan, whatever. So all of these have a lot of images and especially in a developing country like India, the doctor uh, to patient ratio is very low. So obviously, if these AI are developed further, then it will help in analyzing and concluding or diagnosing what the disease is very easily from these images, right? So that is one application. Second is in predicting the protein structure, right? So especially for a researcher or even a um, industrialist the you know uh, predicting a protein structure is difficult like like the traditional way of uh, determining the pr uh, protein structure is through a uh, very tedious ways like say nmr crystallography uh, etc right so that is very a tedious way more cost involvement etc but AI can help in predicting the protein structure very easily. Uh, this, uh, although it could just be a prediction, but then it will help in eliminating a lot of other unwanted variables in the research. So these are the few applications in, uh, you know, biology of artificial intelligence. So this is just, uh, just that I wanted to give you about why AI is important uh, in uh, and why it will boom in the next. 10 years, right? So the next um, job that I have for all of you or the skill is the biomedical engineering. So biomedical engineering is nothing but engineer the, the confluence of engineering principles and medical sciences, right? So here, uh, bio uh, biomedical engineering is useful in diagnosis, monitoring and the therapy of diseases, either chronic or infectious as well. So here what happens is we use the engineering, uh, you know, factors and engineering basics into as an application towards the medical sciences, right? So some of the examples that has come up in the recent days is prosthetics, surgical robots, micro implants and imaging equipment. So these are few of the bio in, biomedical engineering developments that has happened, uh, you know, recently. So yes, this is going to boom as well in the future. 
third field that I have for all of you is microbiology. Although microbiology is a very, very old, uh, you know, the most uh, important and the oldest uh, field in biology that was discovered way back in 1674. But even today, till this date, it has been quite promising, right? So, it, so microbiology is a field that can be used in, say, diseases, that is, uh, you know, how microbes uh, you know cause diseases and in food science that is how it can help in improving the quality of food as well as how the effect of microbe can deteriorate the quality of food so both of these are there in food department and then medicine as well as environment and ecological sciences so in all of these uh, areas microbiology is definitely used so if you are a microbiologist you can be a researcher you can be a quality control biosafety microbiologist you can be a um, bacteriologist, virologist, etc. So all of these are, you know, few of the future, um, you know, scope of microbiology. So especially after the pandemic hit us, the field of microbiology has been booming. So yes, microbiology is one such field that will grow in the next 10 years. The fourth field that I have for all of you is biotherapeutics. So biotherapeutics is a relatively newer term, is a relatively uh, newer area that has come up. So these are basically nothing but drug therapy products that are extracted or produced from a biological source. So that's the reason they call it biotherapeutic. So it can be divided into two sections, bio and therapeutic. So they are drug therapy that has been extracted from biological sources, right? So one of the uh, very common example of biotherapeutic is monoclonal antibodies. So monoclonal antibodies are very widely used in uh, today's era in the medicine field and it has also helped in um, vaccine development as well. So vaccine development and biotherapeutics is something that is definitely booming uh, and it will boom for the next 10 years. The fifth area is computational biology. So computational biology can also be called as bioinformatics, right? So bioinformatics is nothing but the confluence of information technology and molecular biology, right? So here, uh, as a computational biologist, you know, which all fields can you work in? It can be genomics and proteomics. It can be in pharmacy sector. It can be in chemistry sector, which is again related to pharmacy mostly and also in data management database management and uh, maintenance right especially if you are more into computer science than biology then you can become a database management where you need that you know kind of knowledge about biology as well but it, it will involve more of you know database and computational work so that is with computational biology right so that was our fifth field that we saw the sixth that we are going to see is epidemiology. So epidemiology, again, it's not a very, uh, you know, attractive term uh, previously, but then after the pandemic hit, it's definitely become very, very important. So these basically, an epidemiologist will be reading basically as to what the disease outbreak has been, how has this outbreak been caused and why has this come up? What are the causes and what are the symptoms of these of this disease outbreak, right? So that is what an epidemiologist will, um, you know, um, uh, expertise in and they would also come up with SOPs for the future that is standard operating procedures for managing these outbreaks like how uh, if uh, by chance in future again any infectious disease like COVID comes then what are the different procedures that has to be followed both at the national global level as well as from the point of view of scientific research so what are the SOPs that has to be followed so that is what an epidemiologist will do so and uh, COVID has proved us that an epidemiologist is a very important person when it comes to any outbreak of diseases right so the seventh 
uh, field that I have for all of you is the micro is the molecular and the cell biology, right? So this is again one of the most basic uh, field that is there in biology, and it still holds much much more important, right? So it uh, can help in industrial, in medical, as well as the agricultural fields, and it it is. You know, it forms the basics of genetic engineering. So genetic engineering and biotechnology mainly relies on cell and molecular biology. We know how biotechnology has boomed in today's world and in the next 10 years, how it's going to boom. So obviously, the, the role of genetic engineering in biotechnology is huge and molecular and cell biology is the basics of this genetic engineering, right? So in this particular... Um, study or in this particular field you will be purifying modifying analyzing dna rna and protein so basically this is nothing but biotechnology so this is what you would be doing as a molecular or a cell biologist the eighth field that i have for all of you is quantum biology now what is quantum biology quantum biology is nothing but the use of quantum mechanics and theoretical chemistry in the field of biology and the medical sciences right so here we use quantum computers which are much more faster and uh, well used uh, than the traditional computers and here we can predict multiple things for example prediction of protein ligand interactions co-evolution of amino acids etc so these are few application of uh, co use of quantum computers in biology right so this is again one of the field that is quite nascent but then it is booming or upcoming in this era so yes for the next 10 years it's going to really boom the next uh, field that we're going to talk about is bioprocess engineering. Now, what is bioprocess engineering? Bioprocess engineering is the use of biological material to create commercial products, right? So, uh, especially for example, you use microbes and you use a substrate to produce a product and that product can be commercially viable one. So, that is the use of bioprocess engineering in industries, right? So, it can be used in pharmaceutical industry, food, uh, brewery industry or even for the environment, for example, for sewage treatment or for production of biofuels, etc. So, most of the bioprocess engineering uh, uh, principles are used in commercial production in the industrial scale. So this is basically how to get your research from the uh, lab to the industrial scale. So that is what a bioprocess scale up would be. So that's our ninth uh, field. The tenth and the last field that I wanted to discuss today is nothing but drug discovery now drug discovery and development involves a lot of procedures and it's nothing but a discovery of a new medicinal drug that can be a potential candidate against a particular disease right so this involves a lot of steps starting from screening to optimization and studying the properties of the drug to designing the drug to clinical trials so clinical trials itself is a huge uh, procedure in itself right so here every step needs a specialist be the screening optimizing designing clinical trials so most of the screening and optimization is done through bioinformatics these days so that needs a special kind of skills that you must have apart from that clinical trials also is a very vast field in itself so there are four clinical trials that happens for every drug and you know for every stage you know you need a specialist to do that so these are the few skills that is required if you want to enter into the drug discovery side right so so these are the different, you know, life science jobs and skills that I wanted to discuss with all of you, which can, which will be in demand in 2030. So according to your interest and according to your strengths, your experience, etc., you can decide which one is best for you. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.